The push for USMCA passage came to an Iowa dairy production facility this week. Former USDA Secretary and current U.S. Dairy Export Council CEO Tom Vilsack, along with Iowa Senator Charles Grassley, toured the Anderson Erickson production facility in the capital city of Des Moines. AE does not export their products, but says trade does help the entire industry. The message centered on jobs that could be created if the United States-Mexico-Canada deal is ratified by all three countries. Uh, not only does it preserve and protect our number one market, Mexico, uh, which is incredibly important uh, as being a tariff-free market, but it also creates an opportunity for us to protect certain cheese names. The dairy industry has struggled in recent times, and Vilsack says more than 2,000 dairy producers have gone out of business over the last two years, reducing the number of operations to 39,000. It's an opportunity to get more poultry products, particularly into Canada, and there's an opportunity to get uh, higher quality wheat into Canada than we have under the NAFTA agreement. But also, uh, NAFTA needed to be modernized, but altogether, this is important for agriculture, for manufacturing, uh, and for the future and the predictability of it. Senator Grassley is optimistic the U.S. Congress will ratify USMCA by the end of 2019. House Democrats have concerns over labor, environment, and overall enforcement of the entire pact. Trade was on the president's mind when he made several appearances in front of reporters at the G7 conference this week. And we're transforming our country. We're taking these horrible, one-sided, foolish, very dumb, stupid, if you'd like to use that word, because it's so descriptive. We're taking these trade deals that are so bad, and we're making good, solid deals out of them. U.S. producers did get some positive trade news from the G7 involving Japan. It's a very big transaction, and we've agreed in principle. It's uh, billions and billions of dollars. Uh, tremendous for the farmers, and uh, one of the things that Prime Minister Abi has also agreed to is we have excess corn uh, in various parts of our country uh, with our farmers because China did not uh, uh, do what they said they were going to do. President Trump said Japan has agreed to purchase U.S. produced commodities like pork, dairy, and ethanol to the world's third largest economy by GDP. It will lead to substantial reductions in tariffs and non-tariff barriers across the board. And I'll just give you one example. Japan is by far our biggest beef market. We sell over $2 billion worth of beef to Japan, and this will allow us to, to do so with lower tariffs and to compete more effectively with people across the board, particularly the TPP uh, countries and, and Europe. And the president also indicated he'd spoken with China following last week's escalation of tariffs between the two countries. China called last night our top trade people and said, let's get back to the table. So we'll be getting back to the table. And I think they want to do something. They've been hurt very badly, but they understand this is the right thing to do. And Chinese officials denied making calls to the U.S. shortly after President Trump made his statement. Many of the farmers caught on the crossfire of the trade war are preparing for the looming harvest of the commodities involved. Iowa Corn Growers Association board member Mark Mueller was at the trade group's meeting this week calling for the Trump administration to uphold the integrity of the renewable fuel standard. The biofuels future isn't the only elephant in the room impacting producers. Our present administration has done a lot of harm to agriculture like the small refinery exemptions. Corn demand is being decimated with the granting of these small refinery exemptions. I'm afraid that this administration is picking trade fights, starting trade wars, but doesn't have an end game in mind, doesn't have a plan on how to win these fights.